Hey guys, it's Danny. It is very, very early morning and I thought, what can we do on this beautiful early Friday morning? Yeah, I'm recording this today. I've been very busy this week. Well, let's just look at the mini phalaenopsis because hey, that's what I'm actively trying to achieve all year, having a nice, beautiful show with my orchids. So. Today's gonna be mini phalaenopsis galore. Grab a drink, grab a snack, if you will, and let's just spend some time together. I will have to warn you, some of these are not fresh or in full bloom. Some of the flowers are already falling because temperatures have become pretty hot here, and that's their cue to kind of go into vegetative mode. And also, some of them have some wrinkles in the leaves because when you have so, so many blooms, like they do this year, they require a lot, a lot of water and many times it kind of gets me off guard. But it's okay, if you give them a good drink, these guys just perk back up. I actually do have a short, just so you see how dehydrated one of these guys at some point got. It's the one that I put in the 3D pink system, just to make sure she doesn't start to drop all of her leaves because of my lack of time. So yeah, keep that in mind, they're not sick in any way, but that's what happens when they have so, so many flowers. Um, so with that said, before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it. Consider supporting the channel by either using my affiliate links in the description, buying merch, or using the super thanks feature, which YouTube just made available for me. Very exciting, I've never heard of it, but there we go. So that said, let's just start. We're gonna start with this one because I messed it up. I broke a bud right here. Look what I did, I dropped it and I lost a bud, but it's okay, you can't tell. So by the way, these guys don't really have IDs. My tags are like Phalaenopsis Mini, no ID, red veins on yellow, fragrant. <laughs> so because they are commercial hybrids in the flower shops, many of them, they are not even registered. Some of them I did find the ID for, some of them I found the ID and I forgot to put it on the tag. Anyway, you know the drill, if you know the name of these guys, the commercial name, let me know, I'll make a tag but it's not so important because you cannot really search for them in nurseries, right? You just go in the flower shop and if it's there, it's there. This particular one is a very popular one because it is slightly fragrant. Now, don't imagine Belina like fragrance. To me, it's a little dusty, a little citrusy. I'm not a fan of the scent. It can be a little bit strong sometimes, but I mean, it's something if you think you would like the scent. Just so you know, this one is scented. Just like many other mini phalaenopsis, it can put on quite a show. I'm gonna show you these orchids here in, let's say, more natural light. It's not natural, it's just I have some LED spots above me and I'll also show them to you under my grow lights, which accentuate anything purple, pink, red, orange, things of the sort. So you see the difference. For me, they look the best under the grow lights, but reality looks more like what I'm gonna show you on the table. So we're gonna go pretty fast through these, but I'll try to make some artistic B-rolls for you as well. Let's move on to the most floriferous one this year. Next one is a big lip one. I'm not sure about the idea. I used to think it was a big lip Sogo Vivian, but I'm not sure. Looks pretty similar though, this one. So initially it bloomed on this spike, but do we see we are having some flowers missing? Yeah, this flower spike developed early due to a few cool nights in September, rogue cool nights, and she was like, okay, let's bloom. And then the true cool nights arrived in December and she decided to put on another flower spike. That's why she's kind of so wild with the flowers. This is a second flowering on this particular flower shoot. So yeah, we have two flower spikes that are very branchy, but they are not timed. They did not form at the same time, so they don't look symmetrical necessarily. <laughs> but she is incredibly floriferous. I do have a few drying flowers, as you can see. It is about time for these guys to just focus on proper growth, vegetative growth. As a general rule, I do cut away all of the flower spikes on all of my phalaenopsis, except polychylus and novelties, around June and just let them focus on vegetative growth since I have such warm temperatures. And I personally enjoy the very big flush of blooms once a year, not a few blooms here and there throughout the year, wasting the potential and the energy of the orchid. No, that is not what I like. So that's why I always, always, always remove all of the flower spikes once a year on these guys and let them just build up that energy for the beautiful show in the winter, which you're gonna see. Righty, let's move on. I think I need to move a little quicker than this. 
Next up, another very, very pretty one without an ID, which has serious signs of dehydration. Oh boy. Yes, everything is very, very dry. Plus this one had some thrips issues more than the others. She is a bit recouping. So I'm thankful for the flowering show. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this big, but definitely she has more potential, more like what you saw up until now. But this one, I have it for quite a few years. So she's been through the full thrip invasion and she came back on the other side, still okay. So I'm not gonna request too much. Some of you already know her from my older videos. I find this pattern so beautiful. The red actually flows into the yellow so seamlessly, so beautifully. The flowers are limp, she needs water. So yeah, excuse the lack of water and hydration, but these guys are so thirsty, you would not believe. Next up, you would think there are two flower spikes here, right? No. It's just one flower spike, ta-da. This is a weird type of orchid. It kinda decided to put on a keiki during the thrip invasion, which, which some of these guys decided to do since the thrips attacked the crowns and some of them lost the crowns. I have one of those keikis and you can see some thrip damage maybe right here. Anyway, but the keiki decided not to create a flower spike, but the orchid, look at her. So look at this potential. Again, limpy and dehydrated. Oh my gosh, I feel so guilty about it. I, you just can't. They need water every three days. I'm not even joking you. But look at this abundance of blooms. How do I get this many blooms? Easy. I don't let the flower spikes be for the entire year and just let the orchid dwindle her energy and four flowers open at a time. No, we don't do that here on this channel. If you don't want to cut the flower spike, you're okay with on and off flowering throughout the year. You know, do your thing, enjoy this hobby however you like. I like this, that's what I like. So in June, all of these flower spikes need to go. They will be chop chop. And next year we're gonna have an even better show because I'm, I'm gonna water them better. Next up, I do have a name for this one. It is the Little Gem Stripes, whatever's left of it. You've seen it in videos these past few weeks. Now though, she is starting to lose the flowers. She's been in bloom for the past months. I do see she still has a few more buds that she decided to continue to put on. Uh, but again, even if my orchids have still some buds, I do go ahead and cut away all of the flower spikes. That's just what I do. There are two orchids here and each of them has one flower spike. So that contributed to the bloom show, but again, we can do better next year. Righty, next up. This one is a little late to the party. This is one that I received, I think last year, from one of my lovely viewers. Again, no ID, but doesn't it look a little bit like a novelty, like a polykylus hybrid? Well, it kind of behaves like a normal Phalaenopsis. So it is triggered by the drop in temperature. This one, on the other hand, decided to put on three keikis and it's a late flower spike. So I'm not sure if she is prone to producing keikis. Oh yeah, everybody's dry. <laughs> but yeah, this is the first year that I rebloom it. We'll see what she does next year. She's just opening up her flowers and I do have quite a few buds here. So I will enjoy her for longer. This one, you know, I'm not gonna remove the spike necessarily in a few weeks or something. I will let her be because the spike was late. And also I'm still not decided or convinced that she is a normal Phalaenopsis, not a polykylus. So I don't know her that well yet. I don't have an idea. I'm gonna just let it be for a little while and see if the warmth actually triggers anything or if she's just behaving like any other Phalaenopsis. She's not fragrant by the way, but I am really excited to see how she behaves this year. Next up, oh my gosh, this one is getting watered right now. I'm, I'm not even waiting, oh my goodness. So this year, or at the beginning of this year, I did purchase myself quite a few more mini Phalaenopsis because I like them so much. So some of these guys are not my older Phalaenopsis and what you see is just a rebloom. The initial flush of blooms they arrived with is gone and they decided to put on another flush of blooms. So some of these guys don't look so abundant. Uh, I have more of mine here, but now many of these will be just purchased. So this looks like it could have been fragrant when I saw it in the flower shop, but it isn't. Whenever I see this pink flush in the center, I think Shilariana hybrid, but not all of them are Shilariana hybrids. It's okay, I still absolutely adore it. 
because it's a mini fell. I adore mini flowers, dainty little things and orchids that don't occupy a lot of space. And she looks like she is a prolific bloomer. So I'm hoping next year we're gonna do even better than that. I need to water this baby. I'm such a bad mom, oh my goodness. I think she's the worst case, so at least that. Next up, this is another new one with an extra flush of blooms. And I thought she looked so nice. I've never seen a proper yellow and red lip miniature Phalaenopsis. Not this yellow. Again, she looks horrible. I need to water it. You would say, oh my goodness, Danny, you didn't water your mini fowls in two, three weeks. No, I watered them last weekend. It is Friday today. So it's been five or six days or something like that. I've been a little busy this week. Uh, but when I tell you they need water every three days, they need water not to look like this. This is what six days does when they're in bloom and it's very warm outside. So yeah, I did not neglect them. <laughs> but anyway, again, since it's a new orchid, the display doesn't look so good. I need to cut this flower spike that is dried. I don't know where my cutters are. I'm gonna use the scissors. There we go. So yeah, I find this really, really pretty, really beautiful. It looked much better when I purchased it and didn't have these bare flower spikes here but I think next year she will look spectacular. Next up, this is another new one. She is gorgeous, I love this. I don't like purple, but this purple is more of a sweet royal type of purple. Is that even a thing? I don't know. I find it to be very suiting, very nice. These are secondary branches. So the initial branches were these. You see, this one is all dried up. Let's clean them since we're here because I never had time to tidy them up. And this was the initial flower spike here, which again is dry. And what I did was I did cut the flower spikes. Maybe I did so for a video to demonstrate something, I don't know. So the outcome of that is secondary branches that look like initial flower spikes. Yes, they can do that depending how much energy they have, depending on the temperature, if it's cool, they will be prone to creating secondary branches or flower spikes in general. So yeah, this one did well, very nice. I love this one. I love this pattern so, so much. Next up, this is another new one. This is J.O.'s Pink Curl. Can we see all of the blooms are gone? What I need to do now, I don't have my pruners here. So what I will do now directly, I'm just gonna do this now, is cut away the flower spikes right at the base because do we see this one already started to go into vegetative growth. We have new leaves, we have new roots do we see and of course it feels heavy so oh it is still damp you guys <laughs> this is the difference that flowers make this one doesn't need watering right now i water them sunday and i do water them pretty thoroughly and it's still damp because it does not have flowers anymore it went into vegetative growth that's the difference, see? I do not neglect them. But yeah, this has been the J.O.'s Pink Girl ready to start growing. Next up, this is another new one. I don't know what's going on with the leaves. It is how it was. But this is a very good example of what I don't like. This one is getting her flower spike cut today. So this is the initial flower spike. Do we see? and it stopped growing. We have a secondary shoot, a secondary flower spike here with three flowers. On this side, the initial flower spike produced two more buds, two, and a secondary flower spike with three. This is a very, very poor blooming for me and it just drains energy slowly and surely. That's what I don't like. This is what I can't stand to see. <laughs> so in order to have that beautiful flush of blooms, these spikes, these consumers, need to go. And I'm not letting her continue this bloom because it's it's so ridiculous <laughs> compared to the other ones, isn't it? And this is an older one with the initial flush of blooms. Much better, isn't it? I prefer this to the spindly random off blooming throughout the years. This one, if you look at it like this, it's a little it's a little boring, right? It's a it's a pale pink, but if you put this under the grow lights, she looks spectacular. I like her just as it is because I do actually like cool pink colors. I know, shocker. I prefer them to cool purple any day, but under the grow lights, she shines. 
She's so beautiful. I really, really like how she bloomed this year. Obviously needs water, but hey. <laughs> These guys also need a shower, so probably very soon, because right now it's very warm outside, most of the day, very soon I'm gonna take them for a shower. Oh no, no, these guys are okay with showers, especially if it's very warm. So I can leave them outside, maybe through the night to completely dry. It's also very windy. Cyprus is very windy in the spring, more windy than I would like, but at least it means these guys get thoroughly dried. They're not gonna sit with water anywhere. So yeah, they're a little dusty. I think I'm gonna shower them soon. Another new one, this is Sogo Vivian. Again, see what I mean? Initial flower spike is gone. I have three more flowers on a rebloom. Here again, the flower spike created four or five more flowers. It's nothing in comparison to the initial flush of blooms. So this one again will have its flower spikes cut very, very soon and I will let her focus on vegetative growth. They even look a little sadder, don't they? The new ones, they didn't have a chance to grow <laughs> in my climate with my fertilizer and all of that. But don't worry, they're gonna start to look better and better. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the new and sad ones. These are the old and happy ones. <laughs> this one sits in the 3D paint system right there. And oh my goodness, she loves it. This is the one I showed you in my shorts channel that she was super dehydrated at some point because look at these flowers. She has lost a few flowers due to dehydration, but she's recouping and she's putting on even more buds. Do we see? Yeah, and look how hydrated she is. I really love this one. She is a terrific, terrific bloomer, but she drinks <laughs> so much water. So yeah, the key with mini fells, when they have so many blooms, is to water them before they even get a chance to dry out. If one day they're almost dry, the next day they're gonna be super dry. Ideally, you would wanna water them before they get to that stage, but you know, realistically, life can get in the way. But oh man, look at this. Just gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't watered this record myself in two months. I am happy. <laughs> Next up, this is an older one again, as you can tell, very dehydrated as well. This could be the Sogo Gotris. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna try to verify it. Some of the flowers are a little limp. I need to water it. Look at the rootage. So this is a mother plant and a keiki, and each of them has two flower spikes. That's why she looks so full. I usually like to keep the basil keikis together with the mother plants because if they produce roots, they can sustain themselves and communicate as well with the mother plant. So if the mother plant loses roots, the keiki can save her. Bonus, you get multiple flower spikes. Just look at this. So as long as it's not overboard and like it doesn't fit on the shelf anymore, I like to keep basil keikis together with mother plants on mini fells. And I like to have this display. Beautiful, isn't it? Even the most boring, I would say, flower on a mini fell can look glorious when it's in abundance. Don't you think? I think so. This one needs water. I'm gonna water it right now because these flowers are threatening to fall. Next up, this is a keiki. So the mother plant had a serious thrip infestation and lost the crown. This is one of its keikis. I repotted it recently. We don't have too, too many roots. And still, he tried to produce an abundance of flowers and he failed because he does not have enough roots. So I have secondary spikes here that never developed. Do we see the buds are falling and the flowers are gorgeous. The potential is there. The timing though was off. When did I repot him? Oh, January. I removed him from the mother plant in January this year. So just a few months ago, of course, of course he doesn't have energy, but he try, he try. He failed, but he try. Beautiful plant next year. Can you imagine the potential? So yeah, I really like this one. Somebody actually told me the name. Oh, it's Chia E. Yinlin. See, I wrote it on the tag. Thank you for the ID. Alrighty, this one again was one that had serious crown issues. It did not produce a keiki, but can we see? The crown becomes very, very tight here in the sense that we have very tiny leaves and then it becomes normal again. That's the thrip thing. So it stressed her out a little bit and still she put on quite a nice show. I think last year she put on a better show than this year, I remember, but you know, oh, I see a keiki. She did actually produce a keiki as well as a backup. So yeah, she spent her energy on trying to recover her crown, producing a keiki. I'm not blaming her. She has potential as well, but it's still a pretty nice show. 
What I like most about this one is the peachy colored lip under the Barinas. It looks beautiful and spectacular and you'll see on the B-rolls. I don't have an ID for this one, do I? No, I don't. It's just a typical no ID flower shop phalaenopsis. All right, next up, one that looks pretty scary. Um, I think she got the orchid flag virus from the thrips. This pitting on the leaf doesn't look nice, but historically it can actually be resolved by the orchid. My Belina used to look like this and now she's absolutely fine. So with this virus, I don't throw away orchids because I've never had it like spread off cases where the actual insect was the vector, sure, but like cases from my orchid spreading to another orchid, it really didn't happen. And statistically speaking, if you think about it, with the amount of orchids that I have, it should have happened a lot. It didn't happen. So I'm willing to take my risk. But yeah, that's why it looks like this. Pretty horrible, right? Yeah, I know. Luckily though, I'm in control of thrips right now. But again, it looks a little bit like the other one that I showed you with the beautiful yellow that fades into this red. This one though has more sharp edges. So if you look at the flowers, you can see the yellow edge is a lot sharper. So she's a little bit different. I love them both. I wanna keep them both. Um, but yeah, Sally, she looks like this. Out of all of the orchids infested with the thrips, to have this issue and they didn't even sit next to each other but all of the others which is the majority of my collection doesn't have anything so you'd think it would spread more right not really Alrighty, we have two more to go in this category there are a few others but they're new they don't have flowers anymore i cut the flower spikes no point in showing them to you because they don't look like anything next year though so this one i received again from one of my lovely viewers last year or two years ago. She's not as old as the others necessarily, but she's not new. And it is a big lip mini fowl that has this pattern. Oh, it is gorgeous. She is gorgeous, isn't she? So she has an initial flower spike with the secondary branch and that is quite nice for the amount of growth she put on. She's not very, very old. And we see some of my older ones have more leaves, obviously but she has potential look how pretty she is again no id but i think i did see it on the internet with an id this is one that stands out so it's easier to find actually on the internet whenever i search for ids i put in the details of the flower you know big lip purple white edge things of the sorts and i go through pictures until i find it so I think that this one, it's easier to find an ID for than let's say the yellow and peachy one, right? This should be in nurseries because it's stunning. Maybe it is, but as far as I understand, it is a flower shop find. How awesome is that? I really like this one. The big lip is just gorgeous. It, it took that shape that I adore, the very broad lobes, you know? Anyway, I'll stop talking about it because the last one is a pyloric one as well. This one, this is a very popular mini fowl and I've had it eight years ago or so. I lost that particular one and I've been searching for it and I found it again. There is another one that I'm searching for. I didn't find that one, but it looks very similar to this one. So this Peloria of the petals rather than the lip, again, is my favorite. I talked about it in a short. It looks a little bit like clovers right like clover leaf so those two types of pelorias are actually my favorite types this one looks very very pretty we do have more potential i feel like but again thrips what to do but i do believe she has the capability of blooming even better than this so we'll do better next year for sure and i think that has been it in this category these are not all of my phalaenopsis they're just the mean oh no i have another one but it's on a different shelf hold on I lied, I have one more. Totally forgot about this one because this is a newer one. We made a tutorial on this one. I just don't remember <laughs> what tutorial. Oh, she's dry. So this one, oh, look at the little flowers. They're almost fading. They're kind of <laughs> limp. I'm gonna water it. They are a dark purple with a yellow edge. In this combination, you know, I like it. Is it my favorite? Not necessarily, but I like it. I think it has the tiniest flowers in all of my mini fowl collection. And she is quite tiny, but she might be able to grow more. I don't know, she's kinda new. I got it at the end of last year, I think, I feel like. Am I lying? I really don't remember at this point. 
definitely needs a bigger pot that is for sure and water she's so limpy oh my gosh okay let's end this and i'm gonna go ahead and water my rackets before <laughs> eating breakfast Alrighty, so that has been it with my mini phalaenopsis. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you didn't know that it is possible to get such beautiful, luscious inflorescences from them, yes, it is absolutely possible. The vast majority of them are capable of producing this beautiful bloom show because they have been bred and selected to look like that. It is the main feature people were trying to obtain and they obtained it. So if they do not bloom like this, genetics, highly unlikely, Sally. It's mainly environmental or energy reserves. So if you know you've been letting flower spikes just be all year round, that might be the issue. If you're not fertilizing them enough, they are heavy feeders actually, definitely. You need to fertilize them on point. I'm using slow release fertilizer as well as water soluble fertilizer. Light needs to be pretty good, not direct sunshine, but quite bright, not very dark. And obviously the drop in temperature. And yeah, that's what goes into having great bloom shows. Nothing else, just the basics and a good vegetative period. And that's it. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you want tutorials, check the description down below. They take the exact same care as normal standard bigger phalaenopsis. So if you want to follow me on social media, search for me. I'm at Miss Orchid Girl pretty much everywhere. Check out my shorts channel for short form content. But most importantly, subscribe to this channel because here is where I post all the good stuff. So with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.